Over the course of this series, we have followed the journeys of numerous artists. Some have gone from student to practitioner to teacher. Some have gone from disliking an art form to becoming its biggest champion. But all journeys, as pleasant as they may be, must come to an end. Oh, yes. This is the final installment of the series. Now, don't cry, Shunai. I won't. Before we go, we've got two more journeys to take you through. The tabla player, who went from being a classically trained purist to someone who's known for combining different musical genres. And a watercolour artist who has made a name for himself capturing scenes of Singapore's past. One is a story of growth and change. And the other is about how development forced an artist to stand his ground. This is Young at Art. You know, this next gentleman is actually an old friend of mine. Okay, if you used to party at Zook in the 90s... Oh, come on. In the 90s, you weren't even a teenager. Okay, fine. But I did party there a couple of years ago. And last week... Anyway, getting back to what you were saying. If you were partying at Zook in the 90s, up until a few years ago... You would have seen this guy play and would have been completely blown away. Now, he's not a DJ. He's actually a classically trained tabla player. But while the DJs were spinning their house and techno and whatever it is those kids listen to, he was actually drumming his tabla along with them. And he's played with some of the world's most famous DJs, Sasha, Paul Oakenfold, Timo Maas. And now he plays in clubs and at events not only in Singapore but around the world. But no matter where he is, he never forgets his musical, cultural and ethnic roots. Maniam, you have had such an illustrious career. You have done so much in your time. You are a trained classical Indian percussionist. <laughs> How did you end up at Zook? Zook! <laughs> I was doing an album for Chesita. Okay. Uh, under Tropicana. Yeah. So, it's the launch of the album at Zook. Okay. The entertainment manager, you know, he just came after that, you know. Sure, he just came rushing to me and says, uh, Good, huh? just now you played, I'm very nice, you know, good, no? I said, yeah, thank you. Then he looked at me and said, How about playing? You like to play in this club? Yeah. Good, he asked me. I said, No, 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 sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> so when I went back home, uh, I went and told my wife, right. I said, uh, Listen, hey, these people, no? what if funny people know? I said, So why? He said, they asked me to come and play in that club. I asked you to play where? Zook. No, are you mad or not? You get this opportunity, you... What, man, you? <laughs> Go and play, she says. <laughs> I looked at her. Hey. <laughs> sort, of, sort of supporting me. <laughs> and I said, no, la. Go. How long you want to stick to this tabla? So, slowly, you know, it went on that way. Right. Right. Good. If you had told a teenage Maniam that he'd be traversing the globe, playing alongside world-class DJs and hordes of sweaty partygoers, he would not have believed you. Back then, he was a classically trained tabla player. I'm fully, I mean, carried into classical music. Right. right. For four and a half years, I studied the Murudangam. Then I had this wonderful sitar guru who knows the technique of tabla, who taught me for two and a half years to be with him so that I travel with him. Mm. Right, okay. But not house music. <laughs> <laughs> not house music, you know. <laughs> See, did you ever run into any problems with the classical Indian community when they saw you doing this? Some of them are very proud. Mm. Oh. They, felt, they felt very happy right. because they know that I'm going to bring these beats here. So whenever uh, someone listens to it, an audience, yeah. you know, I'll just bring in the beats, you know, yeah. bring in and mix with the, some in, in Indian beats. But at the same time, I'll take a bit from the Chinese, from the Latins, from the Malays, from the African, the beats, you know, and combine together with my Indian theory, with my Indian beats. Right. And then that's where you get that Singapore roja lah. <laughs> So you kind of fell into playing your tabla at clubs with the kind of music that they had yeah. there. 
Did you grow to like it? Yes. Yeah? Yes, that's like... why I'm looking young now. <laughs> I must agree. It's all the house music, it's helped you, has it? <laughs> <laughs> you actually like house music? Not all, huh? Ah, okay. Not all, only certain, certain music, yes, I like. Mani was playing alongside many of the world's best DJs, from DJ Pippi to Dave Seaman to Carl Cox. He even played Tabla on Reflections, the Grammy-nominated album of Paul Van Dyke the award-winning electronic dance music DJ, musician and producer. You need to tell Shuan how many years you played at Zoo. Oh. You won't believe it. How many years? I'm sincerely very grateful uh -huh. to Zook. 17 and a half years. S 17, 17 and, and a half, half years. years? When was this? this is, I started in 92. I think, 92. So. Oh my goodness. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. 17 and a half. And I learned a lot and I met a lot of uh, you know, uh, I mean like producers, you know, agents, you know, uh, even company agents who used to call me to other, you know, to, to play for other branded uh, like Gucci, YSL. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I, rem I remember being at some uh, of those yeah, shows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And slowly, then slowly, 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 my fame just went up. This, and then the international DJs came in. Right, nice. right, right, yeah. And then they came in, they started saying, hey, this man is cool, hey, good, man, this is and then Slowly, 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 you know, the word just went around. Yeah. That's why the tabla man came see. His cultural and musical roots run deep, and he tries to develop and give back to the community in any way he can. In recognition of his efforts, the Singapore Heritage Board named Maniam the Cultural Ambassador for the Indian Community of the Singapore Heritage Fest in 2010 and 2012. Maniam, you know, you are, you're so iconic in Singapore. You've just been appointed ambassador by the Heritage Board for, for Indian Heritage here in Singapore. Um, is that enough for you? Is it? Do you, do you want more? I'm not looking for fame. I want to just give out whatever I have to my fellow Singaporeans. You know, I want to, whatever that comes to me, whatever I create, you know, to uh, collaborate with other musicians, with other uh, musical instruments, whatever I can go, uh, do with them, mm. fuse with them, yeah. mm. come out with something new, which uh, nobody has done. That is what I've been doing till today. Mm. Creating, creating something. At the most recent Heritage Fest, Maniam played in 12 and produced over 20 performances. From conceptualising the items, to sourcing the performers, to logistics. And in true Maniam style, the performances involved fusing different elements, instruments and genres together in perfect harmony. So you don't just play music, you also do other things? Uh, yeah, I do other things for me, like maybe, you know, like a... Like, I'll... Supposing I like something like a dance. So, I just approach a dancer and say, hey, listen, you have been dancing this for donkey years. Why can't you do this, this and that? Oh, you, I need people like you to guide me. Please help me with this. Okay, now, this is what, this is what, this is what. Okay, get this musician, this is all, this is all. Now you come up with it, we come up with a small thing. This is something we develop, something, you know, fusion. So you create music for dancers? Yes. Wow. Yes. Is there anything you still want to do now that you feel you haven't done yet? Of course, you know, like, uh, I like to produce an album. Mm. I like to produce, but I've got four songs, four to five songs with me, but I'm looking for a good DJ. You know, who can, because I, I want to do something like a dance music. <laughs> yeah. Right. This is something like a dance music. That is, you know, where we all can enjoy together. Yeah. Incredible. So cool. Do you still feel very young? I mean, if you're playing in clubs and you're playing with DJs, you're playing all around the world. Well, you see, only my age is just growing, you know. But my heart is always young. You lead such a busy life, but you must have those private moments, right? What, what do you do in your own time? What do you like to do? <laughs> Hi, uh... Hi, uh... <laughs> nothing, nothing. He, he doesn't have that. private time. <laughs> okay, my private time I spend mostly with my wife. Really? Aww. That's nice. So, so, so sometimes I spend uh, maybe in the house calls or something, yeah. or we just go for shopping or something. You know? yeah. 
you know, all of a sudden we we'll just come, let's go, you know, come, we'll just go to a restaurant, go in Makan, you know, yeah, just yeah. go here, they enjoy the food, come here, just go for a walk, this and that, you know, all of this, this and come, let's go to KL. You see, that's why we just leave like that. Do you feel there's any benefit in someone picking it up now? Like just, let's say someone who's about your age, just picking up the tabla for fun. To learn it? Yeah, to learn it. I had a disciple who's 68 years old. Wow! So I finished the class, he said, I want to have a talk with you, can I talk with you? And I said, sure, yes, what can I do for you? No, I want to learn, he said. I said, sure, if you had that type of disciple, what will you do? You teach. teach. Yeah, you teach. teach. I see, then I was thinking the urge in you, no? Yeah. yeah. Come, you know something, in just a matter of three months, he, he's really playing, man. Wow. wow. He's really playing. It From, was his passion. Yeah. And he's still alive. <laughs> he's still alive. He's oh, is he is 75 now. I don't is, know. Does he still play? I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to ask him. <laughs> he said, no, no, no. You stop me halfway. You say you're traveling now. You've got to teach me back. That's the end. Playing the tabla requires good hand eye coordination, rhythm, and concentration. It also helps to develop arm strength and fine motor skills. But the benefits of tabla don't stop there. According to a study published in Evolutionary Psychology, drumming releases endorphins, the body's natural opiates and feel-good chemicals. This makes the musician feel happy performing, which helps to reduce stress and ward of depression. I want to hear you play. I have to hear you play. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Gotta hear you play. I've heard you do this many, many times, and still it amazes me what you can do with a tabla. Thank it you. amazes Thank you. me. I'm completely amazed, and all those things you're saying that you came up with those styles on your own, like those tricks, those like tips, the, like how he gets the the, the, the pitch. pitch to go yeah. up. Ah, oh. amazing! <laughs> I'm just like. It is, it is, it, it absolutely blows you away. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you so much. You have made our day. You know, Shuan, the thing about living in a city as fast-paced as Singapore is that the landscape is constantly changing. Buildings are here today, gone tomorrow. Yeah, I feel like Singapore has this love affair with all things new and shiny. Well, I guess the old has to make way for the new, right? You're not talking about me, are you? No. Why would I do that? Anyway, all this redevelopment and urbanization comes at a price to our history and heritage. Yes, and I think this next artist will agree with you. He's a watercolour artist who has made a name for himself painting scenes from Singapore's fleeting past. You know, the late Della Butcher was an avid supporter of his. She founded the Della Butcher Gallery, and she was a champion of Singapore art in the 80s and 90s. She was, and she said that his solo exhibitions have been distinguished by their moods of tranquility and philosophy. Now, in art critic speak, you know what that means? What? He was really good. <laughs> Seventy-three-year-old Pei Eng Seng has been an artist for the past 50 years. Growing up in a kampung, he used whatever tools he had at his disposal to express his creativity. His canvas was the ground and his paintbrush a broken tree branch. Hello, Mr. Pei. Thank you so much for having us here today. So nice to meet you. Mr. Pei, you've led, uh, you've led a very interesting life. Uh, your, your painting started when? When you were really young, right? When you were six. Oh, like in sand. Yeah, yeah, in sand. So interesting. Right, you Pei enrolled in the Nanyang Academy of Fine Arts in his 20s and took an array of odd jobs to put him through school. It was at school where Pei further developed his love for watercolour painting. 
Pei was so advanced and talented that he graduated from Nanyang Academy a year early and got a job as an illustrator at Longman Publishing. In 1983, Pei decided that he had had enough and quit his job as an illustrator to paint full time. Your painting took a really interesting twist. You were working, you quit your job to continue your painting. What made you quit your job? Chingia, Many fear the instability and insecurity of an artist's life. Pei was no different. When he quit his job, he obtained a taxi license in case he ever needed to make ends meet. But Pei never had to use it and enjoyed a lot of press and interest from the galleries soon after he started painting full time. <laughs> Choi Weng Yang, the respected artist, critic, and curator, calls it a distinguishing visual breadth and depth. Yet others may put it more simply as a love for the old, rural, or quiet. Pei's most beloved watercolor paintings are of old Singapore, the Chinatown series, the Singapore River series, and Little India series. A lot of uh, painters, they paint from a photograph or from an impression that they have, but you paint on the spot. Why, why do you decide to paint on the spot? But as Singapore grew more developed and more of its past started disappearing, so did the subjects that Pei loved to paint. So much of Singapore has become modern, it's become very hard, it's become, I don't know, in my mind, unpaintable. What, what do you find in Singapore that you can still paint? Singapore is getting better, over the course of his career, Pei has amassed a vast and impressive body of work, covering a diverse range of subjects and destinations. But his trademark style and sensibilities are evident throughout. You're, you're 73 years old now, right? Yes. Okay. Um, it's been a long artistic career for you. Do you ever get tired of doing what you're doing? Right. Watercolor painting is used in art therapy to help people with anxiety, depression, and other health conditions. Dr. Arnold Bresky a leading authority on memory improvement, has created a program called the Brain Tune-Up. This program uses art therapy to help patients with Alzheimer's and dementia to improve their memories. Dr. Bresky claims that his program has seen a success rate of 70%. He believes that by drawing and painting, patients are connecting the right and left hemispheres of the brain and growing new brain cells, which leads to better memory. As you've gotten older, do you find that 
you're beginning to slow down. 没有这样的想法，是只要身体健康允许，我会更加更加积极的画画画。How has painting actually helped your body? Has it helped you stay young? Is it help? How does how does it help you? 啊、uh, ，我觉得画画来讲啊。你心情全部投入在画面上，所以一些不三不四的想法都会放开。只有画跟你，所以这个是，我觉得这个对身体来讲是非常有好处的。You know, Shuan, this is it. Yes, it is. Now don't cry, okay? I won't. Okay. During the course of this series, we met so many interesting and inspirational people. And some of them decided to pursue their passions later on in life, like Grandma Rocker Mary Ho. There was the professional ballroom dancer Vincent Tu. And also Madame Ko, who only started learning ballet in her 60s. Then again, there were those who had spent their entire lives honing their craft, like Malay dance choreographer and cultural medallion winner Madame Song Sayed. There was Chinese opera performer Madame Go Siu Giok. And tabla extraordinaire Maniam, as well as the watercolor artist Pei Ying Sing. Now, no matter what, there was this one common thread that ran through, and that was their dedicated, single-minded determination to pursue the passion of the art they love so deeply. You know, Effie, I really must admit, I'm getting a bit emotional just thinking about all these people that we've Please, met. Please, Shuan, do not cry. I said I won't. Shuan, I said don't cry. Yeah, cry now. It's not okay, Effie, relax, relax. It's okay. It's okay. Breathe, breathe. Put yourself together. It's okay. It's alright. Okay. okay good. Well, thank you so much for watching. We hope you've enjoyed watching it as much as we've enjoyed making it. This has been Young at Art. <laughs>